So we can define our function of our combinational logic using um, a, an equation. So for example, here is a, uh, actually the equations for a one bit adder where we have sum equals some function. So this is how we read this, a function of inputs A, B, and C in. So the output S is some function of inputs A, B, and C in. C out is some function of the same inputs, A, B, and C in. And then we can write equations for that. This CL, this kind of symbol, indicates that that circuit is combinational logic, or C combinational L logic. And so we have three inputs, A, B, and C in, and our outputs, S and C out. So S in this case stands for sum, and C out is the carry out. And it turns out that the sum output is, here's the function, and we could write S is some function of A, B, and C in, and the exact function is A, XOR B, XOR C in. C out is some function of A, B, and C in, and here is the specific function. So we've defined the inputs, outputs, and the function of this combinational logic. And this performs one bit addition. These are the equations for one bit addition or one bit adder. So let's define a few terms before we start talking about methods for developing functions or equations uh, that define the functions of a circuit. So a complement is a variable with a bar over it. So A bar, B bar, C bar, those are all complements. A literal is either a variable or its complement. So A, A bar, B, B bar, those are all literals. And an implicant is a product of literals. So A, B, C bar, A bar, C, B, C, B bar, C, A, B, C bar, D. So this product, we've remember overloaded that, um, that multiplication or product symbol so A and B, a product is also called an and term of literals. And remember, we kind of take a, take a shorthand and just like in uh, algebra, we can uh, remove that and or multiplication symbol in this case of the and symbol. So an implicant is a product of literals or an and of literals. A min term is a product that includes all input variables. So if a function is a function of three inputs a, b, and c, our min term is a product or an and term that includes all um, input variables, some form, either the true or complement form, where the true form is a, the complement form is a bar. And a max term is a sum or an or term. Remember, we're overloading that sum that or term, so sum or or term, that includes all input variables. So in this case, the inputs are A, B, and C. Okay, we'll get into using these, um, but keep those terms in mind as we talk about um, the, next, the next few slides. Sum of products form can be used to express any Boolean function. So let's suppose we have some function with two inputs, A and B. We're not worrying about what the actual function is yet. And we want to know whether an input combination occurs. So for example, if the input is A equals zero, B equals zero, we can know that by writing an expression A bar and B bar. And this is called the min term associated with that row. So this product term or this and term is going to be true for that input combination and only that input combination. So A bar and B bar, A is zero. So we have zero bar and B is zero. So we have and zero bar, so that equals zero bar is one and zero bar is one and we get one. So for that input combination, that min term is true. So for the next row, 
where a is 0 and b is 1, that min term is a bar b. For a is 1 and b is 0, it's a b bar. And for the last row, the 1, 1 input combination, it's a and b, because 1 and 1 equals 1. It's true for that row, and turns out it's not true for any other input combination. So if a and b um, were 0, 0, only this min term will be true. All the other ones, ones will be false. Well, 0 bar, right, for this one, 0, um, if a is 0, b is 0, this one, these would be evaluate to. So let's suppose we're considering that input combination. Only this min term evaluates to true. 0 bar and 0 bar is, is uh, 1. For this one, we get 0 bar, which is good, but and 0. Anything and 0 is just 0. We get 1 and 0 is 0. This one would get 0 and 0 bar. We get 0 and 1 is 0. And here we get 0 and 0 equals 0. And so these min terms are true for the input combination for the row they're associated with and only that row or only that input combination. And so if we want to make a function and say, OK, well, let's make a function and let's say it's true for this row only. Well, we want to know. We want to include the min term where it's where that's true. So y equals a bar and b. So y will be true in that case. But if we had another one, like let's say we have a, another one here, now we or that case, or in the case where a is true and b is true, or this case. And the other ones we want to output 0. And so we or together the cases where that we want to be true on the output y. But independent of what this function is, these are the min terms associated with each input combination. Right? These min terms are true for that row and only that row. So to recap, each row has a min term, right? Independent of the function, each row has a min term that is true. For that row and only that row. The, remember, our min term is a product or and of literals. And we form the function by ORing min terms where the output is true. So the min term is independent of the function, but now we choose the min term to include in our equation depending on which output is true. So in this case, we would have two terms or together would have y is a function of a and b, which is a bar b. Or we could have the other case, a and b. And so this is an or, our sum, there's our or, our sum of products our and terms, our min terms. And we can actually write this in shorthand for we use our sum summation, sigma summation of min term 1 and min term 3. And if we're manipulating equations, we definitely want to use the longhand form. But if we want to just write it quickly, we can use the shorthand form. And our min terms are numbered starting with a 0. So this is a common error to start them numbered at 1. So min term 0 is associated with the value 0, 0, or 0. Min term 1 is associated with the value 1, or the input combination of 1, and so forth. Products of sums form, or POS form, is also a form that we can use to write any Boolean equation. So POS form, we still have our inputs, A and B. So every input combination, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And now we're going to have what's called a max term that is false for that given row or that given input combination. 
for, so for zero, zero, we have this or term, this max term that is false. So A or B is going to be false for that row. It turns out only that row, right? For any other input combination, A or B is true. That term is true, right? Zero or one, one or zero, one or one. And so for the next one, we're going to get A or B bar, right? The next row. The next row, we're going to get A bar or B. Remember, this, these OR terms or MAX terms are false for that row. And for the last row, we'll get A bar or B bar. And again, these MAX terms are independent of our function. They're just associated with a row or an input combination. And so now if we have a function, we'll put a function into there and say we want it to be zero for, let's say only for this location, for this input combination, then we would include only that max term, y equals a bar or b bar, only that max term in our equation. But if we instead of want another zero, say we want it to be also zero in, um, you know, in the one zero input combination, we want it to output a zero, then we would and it with, so let's say we want a zero to be here too, then we would and it with that max term, a bar, a bar or b. And all of the other locations would be ones. And so what would happen is, well, let's look at this, y equals a bar or b bar. If we don't know what the input value is, but if the input value is 1, 1, that term evaluates to 1 bar or 1 bar, which is equal to 0 or 0. This evaluates to 0. And so we would get equals 0 and, well, something, this a bar or b bar, or a bar or b. But it doesn't matter, right? If we have a zero in an and relationship, we know that the entire term evaluates to zero because and has to have both of the terms, right? Any and relationship has to have both or all of the terms equal to one in order for it to evaluate to true. And so to recap, each row has a max term associated with it as well. And these max terms are also given numbers max term zero to three. The subscript is the binary value of the inputs. Remember it starts at zero and not one. Common error is to call that max term one, which would be wrong. And this max term is false. This or term is false for that input combination and only that input combination. And so if we have some other function here, zeros, um, that we want to use. Remember, in this case, we are forcing the zeros. So we're going to force the output to zero for these given inputs. And so we'd have, in this case, we'd have A or B. And this other zero, A bar or B. So the zero, zero case, when A and B are zero, a or B is going to force the output to zero. And when A and B are one zero, this next max term, A bar or B, in this case, will force the output to zero. In all other cases, the output will be one. Because in all other cases, for example, this case, zero, one, we get zero or one, that evaluates to one. And we get A bar, which is one or one, we're going to get a one there as well. So we get one and one is one, which is what we want. So for product of sums, we're forcing the zero outputs. In sum of product, we were forcing the one outputs. And we can write this in shorthand form. Here we have our pi symbol that indicates product or and in our case, a product of max terms zero and two. So let's show how you can write a Boolean equation for going to the movies. So you'll go to the movies, m equals one, 
if you have ten dollars t equals one or your friend has ten dollars so let's write a truth table for determining if you go to the movies so you'll go to the movies if you have ten dollars but via one in these two locations or if your friend has ten dollars so that'd be a one here and also here even though we already have a one there and in every other case you won't go to the movies and so now we can write an sop form of the equation remember we're going to force the ones for sop equations so sop sum of product form we're going to look at the ones here and we're going to get a min term of this first one, so M equals T bar F, or the next term, so I'm going to be T and F bar, or the last term, T and F. And so now we have our, our sum of products form of the equation. And we can also write this in our product of sums form of the equation, our POS form of the equation. And so here's our POS form of the equation. POS, remember in POS form, we're forcing the, the zeros. And so we'll look at this input combination. And the max term for that input combination is T or F. Remember that or term, that max term is false for that input combination. So M equals T or F. And this POS form of the equation is actually what we would have expected, right? We can see that this is the or function. Right? It's true for every output where one of the, um, the output is true for and the case where at least one of the inputs is true. And that's the OR function. And again, we should have, we could have written these in, um, in shorthand form as well. This shorthand form would be M equals the product of, or pi product of max term zero, right? Just a single max term here. And the sum of products form we could have written in shorthand form m equals the sum of the or of right sum of min terms one two and three and you'll notice that these shorthand forms are always disjoint sets right so if this has zero in it zero better not be included in the sum of products form Okay, so you may wonder, well, why, we know this is the OR function, what's going on, with the, going on with the SOP form? That doesn't look like OR. Well, it turns out that it, it is OR. It's, you know, it's the same, the same, um, the same function, right? It's gonna produce the same function M no matter what form we represent the equation in. But we're going to show using Boolean algebra we, that we can manipulate the equations so that this SOP form will look like the POS form. So let's do another example. Let's suppose you're going to the cafeteria for lunch. You won't eat lunch if it's not clean or if they only serve meatloaf. So E is going to be zero. You won't eat lunch if it's not clean. So here it's not clean in these two cases not going to eat lunch then, or if they only serve meatloaf. So you're not going to eat if they only serve meatloaf, which is, here's our meatloaf case. They only serve you meatloaf, not going to eat lunch. We already had a zero here, but we can, right, for two reasons is that one's zero. So the only case that you're going to eat lunch then is when it's clean and they're not just serving meatloaf. And so we can write this in sum of products form, SOP form, or products of sums form. So remember SOP form, we're forcing the ones. So we're going to use that min term, E 
equals C and M bar. There's only one min term where the output is true in this case. So there's nothing to or with that. Product of sums form, we're going to force these zeros. And so we're going to get E equals C or M and the next zero, C or M bar and the last zero, C bar or M bar. And so we're forcing those zeros, right? In the zero, zero case, this term is going to force the output to zero because it will evaluate to zero. In the zero, one case, this term is going to force the output to zero because it will evaluate to zero. In the one, one case, this term is going to force the output to zero because it will evaluate to zero. And we can also write this in our shorthand form, the sum of, remember sigma, meaning the sum of min term two, min term zero, min term one, min term two. And in this case, the product of, or pi being product of the and of max terms zero, one, and three. Zero, one, and three. But again, with, when manipulating equations, we'll want to use our longhand forms of the equation. So let's talk about forming Boolean equations. Let's write equations for these statements. We'll go to the park, P, if it's not raining, and we have sandwiches. And so we can write that directly from our equation or our statement p equals r bar and s you'll be considered a winner w's output if we send you a million dollars or we send you a small notepad this is a, a you know an, an easy way to kind of manipulate people right you will we're sending you a million dollars or a small notepad, <laughs> right? That, that statement's true because it's in an or relationship, right? That st statement can be made true by either winning a million dollars or getting a small no notepad. You can eat delicious food if you make it yourself or you have a personal chef and she's she or he is talented but, and you can replace but with and, not expensive. You can enter the building, E, if you have a hat and shoes on, or if you have a hat on. And so that's what the statement says, and, and you'd want to write that down directly. But you can kind of see that, well, you can enter the building if you have a hat and shoes on or a hat. Well, this really evaluates to E equals H, right? We could simplify or reduce that equation to being, hey, just, you know, you can enter the building if you have a hat on. It doesn't really matter if you have shoes on or not. I mean, right, that'll make this term true. But either way, both terms are going to be true or, or require that you have a hat on. Right, so that entire expression, because it's in an or relationship, is going to be true if you have a hat on. But if you're asked to write that equation or the um, equation from the statement, then you would want to write the actual, what the statement says, e equals HS or H. Here we have another example. You can enter the building if you have a hat and shoes on, or if you have a hat and no shoes on. And that's what the statement says. So that's how we would translate it into an equation. And you might realize that, hey, actually, that just means that you can enter the building if you have a hat on again, right? Hat and shoes or a hat and no shoes. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you have shoes on or not, right? This is really just saying, you know, we could reduce it to say 
E equals, you can enter the building if you have a hat on. But the statement, again, says the top one, and that's what you want to write down. But then you could realize, oh, I could actually reduce that to just E equals H. Right? You could read this long list of legal documentation about, um, you know, something that it says, you know, well, you can enter if you have a hat and shoes, or sometimes you can, you know, you may also realize that you have a hat and no shoes and you can still enter. Well, now we can, you know, kind of reduce that down into the summation of, well, E equals H, you can enter if you have a hat on.